If you like this video, please press like and consider subscribing. Thank you. Sorry for slow video upload. Started working on a video, then another interesting idea came about and started working on another video and started working on that one and then I got 30, 32 videos on right now. So, so story of my life, I guess. Anyhow, let's roll back a bit on 28th September and just three cup bit on Starship and let's digest what just happened. Elon Musk, if you didn't hear it, at the event on 28th of September, laid out some of his ideas and quite serious plans and agenda for SpaceX and future of Starship. One of these plans is to put Starship into the orbit, yep, you heard it right, not 20 km orbit, but low Earth orbit, around 200-250 km orbit, within the next six months. This is if he gets approval from FAA and FCA. Now we know Elon Musk was famous for overstating few things and for a while community had a joke if this was a real time or Elon time referring to Elon unfulfilled promises or shall we call them very generous overestimation of time it would take to do things. However, this time, and we must not be coy about this, there might be optimism for Elon Musk's ambitious timeline. SpaceX aims to launch Starship into 20 km orbit with next two months. Now, 20 km isn't actually orbit. Orbit is anything above 160 km, but ideally around 250 to 320 km, which is considered a low Earth orbit, which again extends from 160 km all the way to 2000 km altitude, depending which methodology is used. Uh, to win your astronaut's wing, NASA requires a person to reach 85 km altitude. So all the tourists that will soon start to flock on Jeff Bezos' New Shepard's tourist flights will be, by that definition, astronauts. However, SpaceX and Elon Musk are far more serious what they mean by orbit. So we're not talking 107 kilometers, but more likely 207 kilometers. Although Starship will be capable of lifting things into orbit, current MK-1 Starship design weighs some 127 tons dry, but with three Raptor engines fully fueled for orbital flights will weigh some 500 tons, giving Starship thrust ratio of around 1.21. The Starship won't be able to lift much with these three engines, presumably 10-12 tons at most into low Earth orbit when full version of Starship is developed. This is around MK7, by which point the dry weight of Starship should drop down to 110 tons, as Elon Musk pointed out in his presentation. Yasuku Mazava will most likely ride on Mark 8 Starship around the moon, and by this point, we're talking 2023, SpaceX will work out all the fine tunings on the Starship, perfect everything that can be perfected for a human spaceflight, and a Starship at this point might even drop a few tons in weight, down to 108 tons or less. This would give, with current improvements in Raptor engine, considerable range and much higher performance in thrust ratio from current 121 to around 1.3. But this time, with around 25 tons of cargo, at this point Starship could be reutilized instead of Falcon 9 to launch stuff into low Earth orbit, especially if items are less than 25 tons in weight. Although Starship wasn't envisaged as single stage to orbit transportation system, with the evolution of Starship and Raptor rocket engine, it might just become that by an accident. As this video goes up, Starship Mark II is under construction in Florida. Both Starships will be used as a test bed and proof of pudding, sort of. If one experiences an unscheduled rapid disassembly, there is always the other. However, the schedule is very ambitious, and we'll see if Elon Musk was perhaps a tiny bit ambitious. That being said, I am confident it can be done. First orbital Starship flight within six months from now is quite possible. SpaceX has a grueling schedule. Current Mark 1 and Mark 2 Starships aren't orbital vehicles, lack of any heating insulation or protection. However, Mark 3 and Mark 4 Starship will be designed for orbital test, launch into orbit and re-entry. You might wonder why build two Starships at the same time? Perhaps economy of scale? I really don't know. However, it is a smart way to ensure, in case of failure, the loss of one vehicle won't dramatically delay progress on the other and lessons from loss of one vehicle will enable SpaceX team to remedy design mistakes. What we learned from Starship presentation on September 28th 
Elon Musk gave us some great ideas and insights and what lies ahead for SpaceX. Within the next two months, work on Starship MK3 or Mark 3 will start. This will also be the first orbital test vehicle. It is likely to be capable of 20 to 30 km altitude and will test Starship's three Raptor sea level rocket engines. It is not clear if all six Raptor rocket engines will be installed into Mark 3. However, following Starship Mark 4 will be designed to orbit Earth. It will be the first Starship capable of reaching low Earth orbit and land back on the same spot. It will be the first fully capable Starship and if all tests are successful, it will be the first commercial vehicle in SpaceX fleet. All this could happen as early as mid-2020, with work on uh, Mark 3 starting in January 2020 and Mark 4 in March 2020, with Mark 3 scheduled to be completed by early April and Mark 4 sometimes in May 2020, with launch of both scheduled within month of their completion date. As I'll be making series of updates on SpaceX Starship with next video on Raptor rocket engine, I'll end this video at this point. However, I'll be really grateful if you could check out my friend's channel. He's massive SpaceX fan and also 3D prints space vehicles and starships of all sorts. Very dedicated and very accurate SpaceX designs. So please check out his channel, Spaceship Mania, and consider subscribing to him. Thank you.